gonna sit there and eat sun chips in the middle of the video. <laughs> just, just, you know what? Like a man. Like a, like a man. I don't know about that, brother. All right, we talk. We're talking about. We're talking about manhood today. And you have a very interesting story because you climbed a tree yesterday trying to get a cat. You got to tell me and everybody else exactly what happened and why you climbed up that doggone tree <clears throat> to get that doggone cat. Okay. So I'm working a part-time security job in an apartment complex. All right. While patrolling or walking, um, there was a guy, like, reaching his arms up to a tree, and there was a cat up there about 20 feet up. That's like, for those who probably can't visualize that, it's like two basketball goals. <laughs> and um, they were like, no, that's like the closest branch. So cats me, I'm like, how'd the cat get up there? He said he thinks the cat got scared and, and ran up the tree. So he was like, well, I told him I'd watch it. And uh, he could go and get some rope or something or a ladder. And he came back like five minutes later, like his wife said, the cat's done it before. Uh, it'll come down. I'm like, okay, I'm like, this particular tree? I wasn't sure. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, long story short, 8.30 came around. Cat's still in the tree. What time did y'all first see the cat? I saw the cat, like, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Oh, so the cat was comfortable. <laughs> the cat was comfortable. He stayed up there at eight thirty. That cat was comfortable, bro. That cat was fine. Well, I guess it was comfortable. It wasn't coming down. So I mean, we tried everything. We threw tennis balls at it. By this time, eight thirty, another couple was out there just randomly. Like they saw it up there early and thought it would be down, so they wanted to help. They didn't know the people who owned the cat. So mm -hmm. I knocked on the door, got them. So all five of us are out there trying to get the cat down now. Throwing tennis balls at it. I hit it with the tennis ball a couple times. Mm, so now, so, so thank you for, for uh, letting us know that. Peter, that wasn't me. That was him. <laughs> I, I ain't hit no cat with no type of ball. That wasn't me, bro. <laughs> I mean, it didn't hurt the cat. cat of course it didn't. It didn't come out the tree. You didn't hit exactly. it hard enough. Sorry about that. Cat lovers. Right, yeah. Um, and my mom has a cat, by the way. So uh, that's probably the only reason I paid this much attention. You know. Help us, Father. But, um, yeah, so... I, I backed my truck up to the tree at one point, too, you know, to see if he could stand on top of the truck and the cat might trust him a little more to catch him or something, you know, but she stayed in the tree. So, uh, the couple had, like, a rope and, like, those metal hook things that, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you use when you go rock climbing and stuff, and uh, they were trying to throw it at They've me. done this before. I don't know. They probably have. That, probably that cat have. climbed that tree one time. <laughs> <laughs> they had that rope for a reason. But this is the other couple that didn't own it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So um, when I approached him earlier, he was like, yeah, I'm not climbing that tree. It's like, I don't blame you. Let me go get the guy who owns it. I know he didn't want to climb the tree. So I'm but To get his cat. To get his wife's cat. To get his wi oh, wife's yeah. cat. Okay, and he gotcha. was like, I mean, I hope he never sees the video or she doesn't see the video, but she's like, he told me, he's like, I don't care nothing about the dog on cat. His wife is just wary. <laughs> I mean, he was being honest. He was like, my wife is just, you know, irritated, upset, whatever. Um, those of you men who have wives, I don't, you know. Yeah, praise the Lord. That means yeah. even though he didn't want to get that cat, he had to get that cat. <laughs> he had to get that cat down. Uh, yeah, he had to get that cat. He wouldn't go sleep tonight, uh -uh. you know. So I'm You would step outside underneath the limb trying to get the cat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I know. Praise the Lord. So, I'm standing on top of the truck, and I'm like, well, I don't mind going up there. And he was like, no, I, I wouldn't want you to do it either. Um, so, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, you know, Lord, do I feel bad about doing this? Like, give me an uneasy feeling. And I didn't get one. And so, I'm like, I'll go up there. Because by this time, I've thrown the rope over the nearest branch and got the metal part back down. So, we're hanging on the two pieces. And, um, so I just, I don't know, I just put it around my waist, locked the other side of the rope onto it, you know? So I had the, the rope around my waist and after that, I kind of just muscled my way up there. Um, and you got the cat and yeah, like I got up there, sat on the branch, 
cat came to me, cat didn't want to let go of the tree. I'm sitting here yanking on the cat. Like, if the amount of force it would have taken me to pull this cat and its claws off the tree would have sent me, like, flying back. It, that's how tight it was holding onto the tree. So, um... So the cat didn't want to come down? No. The cat, cat was just afraid? Cat, the cat was just afraid. So, yeah. I, um, eventually stood up on that branch as the cat climbed up on another branch. And I just picked it up and aimed it down and bombs away. And there went the cat into a a blanket. Didn't just hit the ground and nobody caught it. But it went into a blanket. They caught it in a blanket. Wow. You know? So, and from the time of 5.30 until this time now, how long did it take for you to get the cat? It was probably about 8.40. When you got the when cat? When I climbed out the tree. Yeah, and I, to get out the tree, like I just put the rope kind of underneath, underneath my leg, underneath my butt, and kind of just pulled myself down. Wow. Yeah, it's it's funny you even <clears throat> even talk about just how you had you were trying to get that uneasy feeling that I was I uneasy about doing yeah. this. God give me that type <laughs> of feeling, and but it's it's still I think it's something that is innate. It is something that is in a man uh, to. Uh, to desire that type of adventure. I mean, I, I, I mean, needless to say, it was crazy because what you were trying to go get was like it was a cat. It was a cat. <laughs> but nevertheless, <laughs> I think I think it's something inside of us that says I still want to climb that tree. Yeah. I want to see if I can get up there. <laughs> Let me yeah. just see if I can make it up this tree. I want to see if I can conquer this. And I, I, I was, um, I was studying uh, just the makeup of man, how God created us. And if you notice in in Genesis chapter one. Uh, it says that, that they made us in the image of them, in the image of God. He created us. And in this image, after he created us in his image, then he says, I want you to do these things. He said, I created you. I want you to subdue the earth. I, I, well, he said, he said I, wanted, I want you to, uh, to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to subdue the earth. And then he says, I want you to rule over it. Uh, and you look at these things that God has, has told man to do and, and you look at the makeup of how he created us. He created us to be strong. The Bible says the wife is the weaker vessel. The woman is the weaker vessel. But you look at a man and you look at how men, we crave adventure, how it's something that uh, we have a desire inside of us uh, to, to run towards, to run, to, to run a, a race towards something that we believe is valuable. Now, we know after we come unto Christ, then we recognize what's valuable and that's that's uh, that's the Lord God. So we we run a race towards Him, and after we run towards Him, then the Scripture says, after we seek Him first, He gives us all the desires of our heart. But but rather, it's not of our perverse heart. But as we continue to seek Him, He gives us the desires of His heart, because as we continue to seek Him, our desires become His desires. Right. But you know, you were getting ready to climb that tree, and it takes me right back to what God told us to do: to be to be fruitful. Uh, to multiply, to subdue, and to rule, and that word "subdue" means means uh, to take over, to control, to seize. And then he says, "Not only do I want you to seize the earth, but I want you to rule over it." And that tree is like it, it serves as this uh, as this limitation. It serves as this idea of can I climb this? Can I can I possibly get up to that branch, get that cat, and then and then and then make sure the cat the cat comes down safe. That's that's like that's like manology 101, mm -hmm. and um, I think it's amazing that you climbed the tree. Now I probably wouldn't have climbed the tree. <laughs> I probably would have prayed for the cat to come down and believe right. by the Holy Spirit that that cat that cat heard my prayer. Maybe I should have prayed that because I you, prayed, Lord, help me to get this cat. Down. No, yeah, see, <laughs> see, you prayed and He gave you the exact desires of your heart. I would have prayed, and, uh, Holy Spirit, let a mighty wind come <laughs> rushing <Lord>. by. <laughs> Lord, be a flaming fire and, wow. and take this cat, man. Lord Jesus, I probably wouldn't climb the tree. But nevertheless, I think it's something inside of us as men. We desire, we desire uh, to to fulfill what God has given us to do to mm -hmm. to to replenish, uh, to multiply, to subdue, and to rule. And I think that when when our desire is in the right place, then I think that that then we'll have we'll have the right goal. The question does not become. Um, uh, what you know what what is uh, or, or rather the question is um, 
is what we are chasing after, is what we're trying to subdue, is what we're trying to climb, is the tree that we're trying to reach, is whatever is in that tree, whatever is lofty, whatever is high up, whatever is on the top of that ladder, is it worth getting? Then the other question is, once we get it, can we keep it? Mm-hmm. I think that's the big thing with men. Um, you know, a lot of times you hear in the world, people will say, men, men are always out to catch something. Mm-hmm. Men want to catch something. You know, a lot of times when, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, men, uh, we also have that competitive nature, many of yeah. us. Competitive nature, we want to catch something. Sports teaches us to catch something. You got to catch the ball. Right, right. You got to catch this. You got to catch that. You go out, you're going to fish and you got to catch the fish. You got to, you got to hit the pins. Like you, you, you're trying to catch something. You're after something. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then a lot of times when you're the perverted man are going, he's, I'm trying to catch a woman. So he catches a lot of women and then he tallies them up on his, on his board. And he says, these are the number of women that I've caught. These, this is the score that I've caught. And our sports mindset, our competitive mindset, it, it goes into the perverse man's mind. He says, just like in football, when I had to learn the rules to, to, to score, now I'm catching all these women and now I'm putting them down on my tally sheet. And he's saying in his mind, he's saying, I have, the, I have an, in, an ingrown desire inside of me to subdue, to rule. And now I've taken my perverse mind. That's without that of the Holy Spirit, without that of God. It has not been renewed. And I'm saying in this mind, I'm going to subdue something. But what I'm trying to subdue, I mean, I don't need to go in that direction. I met so many men who says, you know, I can, uh, I can catch a lot of women. You know, Cornelius, look at how many women that I, I've, I've been with. Look at how many people I've been with. Look at how many things I've done here. Look at how much money I've got. Look at all these things that I've, I've, I've obtained. But then the two big questions that come to mind is, can you possibly keep what it is that you caught? You know, it really speaks to the, to the character of the chaser. And it also speaks to the substance of what he is chasing. I think, I think what he is chasing uh, is just as important as the character of the chaser. Yeah, I agree. Because when you were, when you were talking about that, I'm, it makes me think of, you know, what's in the tree. And it's worth mm-hmm. like is what you're chasing worth it. So it's like, okay, I have this goal at, at the top of the tree, and I want to reach it. But there's always that chance that you could fall, you know. So is it worth falling? Is it worth dying for? So, you know, in that character, it says shows the character of mm-hmm. that man. So like, if I'm reaching for Christ and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. I'm trying to save lives, and <clears throat> I'm being condemned. You know, you're gonna get condemned for that. People are gonna come against you. Mm-hmm. People are gonna bash you. They're gonna talk about your name. They're gonna throw your name in the mud. Like, is that gonna be worth it? Mm-hmm. You know, because those are things that you have to go through. That's those are things that you're gonna go through. Mm-hmm. Um, opposed to if I'm chasing some worldly object, you know, I wanna, you know, get with this particular woman and and et cetera, et cetera. Is, is it worth going up there and, and then the possibility of you catching AIDS later? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think, I think men have a sense of danger inside of us mm-hmm. where, um, we don't mind pushing the limits. Mm-hmm. And I say that to say the tree for you was a limit and mm-hmm. you recognize the danger and you risk yourself. I mean, you risk po- possible paralysis <laughs> for a cat. And, yeah. and what was, and, 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 to, and to be honest with you, just being serious for this second, I mean, it, it wasn't so much of even just the cat mm-hmm. as much as it was the idea that there's a, there's a woman who desires to have something that she sees as valuable in the tree. Right. And from the, the kindness of your heart, you wanted to make sure she had what she saw was valuable that you put your own self aside and you sacrificed even your own safety for the sake of something that didn't even belong to you Mm -hmm. for the sake of an animal that that climbed up in the tree all by itself and probably had the ability to jump down all by (laughs) itself but but you you put you put your own self on the line and i think as i said earlier i think that speaks to the character of the catcher and um, and what is in that tree, like you just said, is it valuable? I think many men nowadays we are chasing, uh, we're chasing all the things that don't matter. Because one day we'll wake up in eternity. 
Right. And our eyes, it will flash right before our eyes. And, and the, the, the Bible says that we will stand before Christ. And when we stand before him at the throne, at the, at the, the judgment seat, yeah. um, he's going he's gonna to judge us for our works and our actions. Mm-hmm. And what will the man say? You know, what, what were we chasing all of our life? And, and we're standing there before him and our life flashes before our eyes. And we see all these women and we see all these things, all this, all these ideas and success. And I wanted the money. And I want all these things. And we see all these things that we're chasing. And then we finally realize Didn't it's worth it. nothing. It's worth nothing. You you finally got the million dollars you're after, and now it's over. But it really speaks to the character of the chaser, mm-hmm. and it speaks to the substance of, of what of what he's chasing. And I, I encourage you men uh, to really look at, really analyze what it is you're chasing, and to make sure that whatever you're chasing, you know, it, it, it's worth it. And I'm telling you, nothing nothing is better than than, than truly living a life uh, living a life of seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, that is the beginning of all wisdom. That is um, that is the pursuit that we're after. And and once we do, I guarantee you, He'll give you all the desires of your heart, because your desires become uh, His desires become your desires as you continue to seek Him. God bless you, man. Aaron, thank you so much. Um, you can get them nasty sun chips up out of my room now. <laughs> no bro i'm straight and 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 don't don't forget uh if you want to you can get my new you can get my book mother books just fail so you're gonna be a man uh learn more about manhood i wrote a lot about manhood in this book um and all that kind of stuff man we need to do another one of these we need to do another thing i need to talk about suffering in silence that's the next book that i'm, I'm getting ready to release it's called suffering uh in silence just teaching people that they are not alone. You're not alone in your sufferings. You're not alone in your church. You're not alone in the things that you go through. Other people are going through things, and just because they don't show it, doesn't mean it's not there. So we need to talk about that next. Yeah. Suffering in silence. But God bless you, men. Be encouraged. Thanks.